Hello, in this video I'm going to be teaching how to do binomial expansions of the form 1 plus x to the power of n. Okay, and so uh, I'm going to cover quite a few different things in this video, so I'm going to timestamp each part of the video below. And we're going to start off with Pascal's triangle, how we can use that to find terms in an expansion, and also how we can use it to help us expand things that are of a, you know, a, a big power of n. Okay, and so let's start off very briefly talking about what Pascal's triangle is. I'm not going to go into too much depth because I'll cover that more in my statistics videos. But pretty much, it's just a triangle of numbers. And it goes like this. It starts off with 1, okay? In the row below that, it's 1, 1. And the row below that, it goes 1. And where we've got two terms in the row above next to each other, like this example here, the one in the middle of that is what happens when you add them together. So we've got 1 plus 1 is 2, and then 1. The row below that would be 1. Well, now we've got two terms next to each other, so we've got 1 plus 2 is 3. Next to that, we've got these two terms here. So we've got 2 plus 1. Whoops. We've got 2 plus 1, which is 3 and 1. And you can see this is going to repeat and, you know, go on forever, right? The only other thing I'm going to mention is when it comes to the rows and columns, when we count them, we start from 0. So, for example, the rows of Pascal's triangle, well, this is the 0th row, this top one here. So then this is the first row of Pascal's triangle. Okay, so we start from 0. So this is first, second, and then it continues. And the same thing applies with the columns, okay? So this would be the zeroth column. Maybe I'll pick a row down to make it easier. This would be the zeroth column, or first column, second column, like that, okay? So it starts from zero when we're counting with Pascal's triangle. The only other thing actually I'm gonna say is we can use our calculator to find numbers in Pascal's triangle, which is particularly useful, say, if I wanted the number that was, you know, 100 rows down. And the way this works is, okay, remembering that we start from zero, say I wanted to find this number here, okay? So that would be in the, well, zero, one, two, third row down, okay? So this is the third row down. Let's write it here, third row down. And how many across is it? Well, we start from zero, so it's zero, it's one across, okay? So one across. Now, there's some notation that we can use to help us find these numbers, and it's called choosing, and you use it a lot in statistics, like if I've got four ob four objects and I want to pick three of them, I could do four choose three, okay? But in you can also use it to find numbers in Pascal's triangle. So the way we write it is like this. We say it three choose one, and that would relate to that highlighted number, three choose one. It could also be written like this, three C one. Or the way I'm going to refer to it in this video, and I think most people would, is in brackets, almost like a vector, 3, 1. Now, you can use a calculator. There is a formula as well that I'll talk about right at the end. But you can use your calculator to find these numbers. And I've got my calculator here. And I don't know if you can see, let me find it. The button for that is this divide one there, N, C, R. So N, choose R. And so in the example here, our N is 3 and our R is 1. So um, all, all you have to do is put 3 then I'm gonna do shift divide to get the, the C. So three and then one like that. And once you've got it in that form, you press equals and it gives you an answer of three. So that relates to that number there. If we wanted say, as another example, this number here, this four, well, we go down. So how many rows are we going down? Well, zero, one, two, three, four rows down. So it would be four, choose. How far across are we going? Well, we're starting from zero. So zero, one, two, three, we're going three across. So it's four choose three, which as I said, I would probably write like this, four choose three. And if I do that on my calculator, four choose three, I get an answer of four. So you can see, uh, let's write that there. So you can see that is a very brief introduction to Pascal's triangle. Now we can actually get on with using it to find expansions, right? So I've rewritten Pascal's triangle over on the right hand side. And you can see I've already expanded one plus X up to the power of three. And you can see this, relates quite nicely to Pascal's triangle if we refer to the coefficients of x's, right? So let's take a look at this x, one plus x to the power of zero. Well, that's one. Let's look at the top row of Pascal's triangle. It's one. One plus x to the power of one. Well, we've got one plus one x, okay? Let's write the coefficients in one x like that. And that refers to these two ones here. The next one, one plus x squared. Well, we've got one plus two x plus one x squared, okay? So one plus two x plus one x squared, that refers to the third row, and so on. So if I asked you to expand one plus x to the power of four without actually doing it just by using Pascal's triangle, you could probably just look at this row here and say, well, it's quite easy, I can expand it like that. 
Now, the only thing I will say is, um, when it comes to this, all you need to remember is it just builds up in terms of x. So it starts off with x to the power of zero, then x to the power of one, two, three, and builds up like that. And you can see that here. So x to the power of zero, one, two, and three. So let's now expand one plus x to the power of four. Well, it's gonna be one plus four x plus, let's have a look, six x squared plus four x cubed plus uh, x to the power of four. Pretty easy, right? And that's pretty much what this video is about, how we can use Pascal's triangle, because sometimes you might want to expand something of a form one plus x to the power of 50, okay? And so you can see this Pascal's triangle is gonna make it a lot easier. So let's see how else we could have done it if we hadn't been given a nice picture of Pascal's triangle. So how could we have expanded one plus x to the power of four, okay? So one plus x to the power of four, how are we gonna use our choose notation? Well, as it's to the power of four, okay, we're gonna be using the fourth row of Pascal's triangle, yeah? Because zero, first row, second row, third row, fourth row. So that's pretty easy, right? Our power of n, so this power up here, that's the row of Pascal's triangle we're referring to, okay? And so say we wanna start off, so I'm highlighting a lot of stuff with this number here, okay, the first one. Well, that's gonna be four, choose zero, okay? So we could write that in four, choose zero. And remember, we don't have any x's at this point. The first term out of our expansion when we do this doesn't have any x's. The next one along, plus, well, we do four, choose one, because we want this four here. So four, choose one, and we've got one x. Plus the next one, four, choose two, uh, to power, multiplied by x squared. And we just continue like this, four plus three x cubed, plus four, choose four, x to the power of four, okay? And if you work this out on your calculator, I can do like, well, we've already written the answer, but I could do the first one. Four choose zero gives us one. Four choose one gives us four, so plus four x squared, or it's four x, sorry. And you can see that that is gonna give us the expansion. So we don't actually need to draw out Pascal's triangle every time just to expand something that is of this form, okay? So let's take a look at another example. So this is a further example here, and it says, expand the first four terms of one plus x to the power of 20, and what is the coefficient of x to the power of 17? So we're gonna be using Pascal's triangle here, or our n choose r, rather than writing out the whole uh, Pascal's triangle. And so remember, if we looked at the example above, well, the power of our one plus x is the value of our n in our n choose r, so we're gonna have 20 choose zero first, plus 20 choose one, x plus 20 choose 2 x squared plus 20 choose 3 x cubed and then we don't need to expand anymore so i'm just going to work these out on my calculator so 20 choose 0 that gives me 1 plus 20 choose 1 is 20 so 20 x plus 20 choose 2 x squared so that's 190 x squared plus uh, 20 choose 3 x cubed, so 1140 x cubed, and so on, okay? Makes it so much easier, doesn't it? Now, for the uh, second part, where we need to find the coefficient of x to the power of 17, okay? Well, our r, or our second number in our n choose whatever, that refers to the power of um, x that we're gonna get out, okay? So for example, with 20 choose three, the three refers to the x cubed in, in this case. So if I wanted to find the 17th term, okay, we could do 20 choose 17 like that. And if we do 20 choose 17, I get 1140, 1140. And so the coefficient of the x to the power of 17 is that. So we would have 1140 x to the power of 17. So finally, the last thing we're gonna look at, okay, is how we can find a formula for this expansion if uh, we don't have a calculator, okay? And the way we're gonna do that is using this fact here, which says if we have n choose r, this thing here, that is actually equal to n factorial divided by r factorial multiplied by n minus r factorial. And very quickly, if you haven't seen factorials before, it's really easy. If you take a whole number, again, it has to be a whole number like five, for example, and we have five factorial, that's how we read the exclamation mark. All it means is we multiply it by every other whole number lower than it until we get to, you know, one. So we've got five times four times three times two times one, yeah? Uh, maybe let's do a different one. Three fa uh, factorial, 
can't write now. Three factorial would be equal to three times two times one. And you know, it's pretty easy. That's all factorial means. So say we have a generic example here where we've got one plus x all to the power of n. Okay, and remembering what we did in this example here, okay, well, as we've got to the power of n, okay, it's going to be n choose and then the expansions. So let's write it out. So we'd have 1 plus x to the power of n is equal to n choose 0 first, yeah, plus n choose 1 multiplied by x, plus n choose 2 multiplied by x squared, and that's going to go on forever until we get to n choose n multiplied by x to the power of n, okay? So now what I'm going to do is substitute these n choose 0, n choose 1, and so on, with the formula for that. So we could rewrite this as what well, n choose 0 is the same as n factorial divided by r factorial. And in this in this first case here, this one, I'll highlight it, our value of r is 0. So it's 0 factorial multiplied by n minus 0 factorial, which is just n factorial, okay? And one thing to note that I probably should have said is 0 factorial is just equal to 1. But we'll simplify this at the end. So let's now move on to the next one. So we've got n uh, choose 1 multiplied by x. So plus well, we've got n factorial divided by r. In this case, r is equal to 1. So 1 factorial multiplied by n minus 1 factorial uh, multiplied by x plus and so on. So I'll do the rest. n factorial, r is now equal to 2 for this one here. So we've got 2 factorial multiplied by n minus 2 factorial multiplied by x squared. And finally, that goes all the way up to n factorial divided by n factorial multiplied by n minus n factorial multiplied by x to the power of n. Okay, hopefully that made sense where all of those numbers came from. So let's just now simplify this, which is pretty easy. So like I said, 0 factorial uh, is 1, so we can get rid of that. And now we've got n factorial over n factorial. Well, we've got basically 1, the numerator over the same denominator. So that's just going to be equal to 1 plus, and then let's have a look at this one here. Okay. So remember what I said, when we have a factorial, we just multiply it by every number lower than it until we get to 1. So n factorial is actually equal to n multiplied by n minus 1 factorial, isn't it? Because that's the same thing, we can actually do that. 1 factorial is 1, so then we're left on the denominator with n minus 1 factorial. And you can see these two cancel, and we get left with n multiplied by x. I'll write this up neater at the end. Plus, then let's do the same trick on this part here now in green. So we've got n multiplied by n minus 1 multiplied by n minus 2 factorial, all divided by 2 factorial multiplied by n minus 2 factorial. And you can see these two cancel out and we're multiplying that by x to the power 2. Plus 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 like this. And then we've got, well, n minus n factorial is 0 factorial, which I said is 1. So that's just 1. And we've got n factorial over n factorial again, which again is 1. So we've just get left with x to the power of n. So if we write this out neatly, we get 1 plus nx plus n multiplied by n minus 1 over 2 factorial multiplied by x squared. And I'll write the third term in just so we get a better view of what this formula is. The next term will be n multiplied by n minus 1, n minus 2, all divided by 3 factorial multiplied by x to the power of 3, plus plus plus, all the way up to x to the power of n. And so if you don't have your calculator, this formula is given to you, I believe, in the formula book. You can just use this formula where n is your power, and you can use this for an expansion of stuff of the form 1 plus x to the power of n. So hopefully this video is useful. I feel like it was quite long, but hopefully it was useful. If it was, uh, like, subscribe, and share, and go over to my channel for times more maths tutorials. Thanks for watching.